Hi, everybody. Welcome back. It's Jill with Go English Coach. We are doing our advanced grammar, advanced grammar one class five today. So we're now into the second half of the first month. Um, we've talked about present tense, um, present progressive. We introduced um, some simple past and past progressive last week. And today we're going to dive a little deeper into that. Um, I'm moving fairly quickly on these topics because um, you guys are advanced learners. So if this is a little bit, you know, over your head or more advanced than you would like, you know, feel free to check out that intermediate grammar class. Um, that might be a nice refresher. And then you can use this to kind of level up a little bit with um, with these tenses. So let's jump in. I've got, on, first on our list, we've got a review of simple past and past progressive. Another thing that we looked at in our last class was the long list of past irregular verbs. So, you know, we looked at maybe the most common ones, be, go, do, have, those are come, those are kind of like the, you know, top five, there's a top 10 of the ones that you should really, really know. Um, and in general, you know, it's just a good idea to get that list and be pretty comfortable with it. So we can look at that again today too. Let me just, I'll put that on my list to give you the list and you guys can Hopefully just take a little screenshot or something of that and then, you know, practice it when you've got some downtime, you know, um, you know, keeping in mind that, um, you know, coming to these classes live is a great way to interact with other students and with me. Um, as I said in my other classes, I, I do love teaching to a camera, but it's so much more fun if everybody shows up. So um, if you are watching this on a replay, don't worry, you're still getting a ton of information. Um, I would just say my recommendation would be um, to find ways, this will be your homework, okay? Find ways to interact in English. You know, maybe you have um, at work, you've got a friend who speaks English and maybe ask that person if you can have coffee together two days per week for a half an hour and speak only in English. And when you're with that person, also ask them to tell you when you make mistakes. Um, because if you don't tell people that, typically people are not going to tell you when you make a mistake. And that's just really, at least in, in American culture, it's not very, um, it's not very likely. It's not very comfortable for somebody to tell somebody they're making a mistake. But if you open that door and say, please, 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 if you hear me make a mistake, please tell me. Okay. Um, I have had plenty of friends who um, have, you know, we were really good friends and, and um, <laughs> one time we, I, this is kind of a, it's a really funny story actually. Um, but I had a student, um, actually he wasn't a student. He was a friend, a friend of mine and we worked together. And if he watches this, I hope he doesn't hear the story. Cause he'll know, <laughs> he's, he's going to know who I'm talking. He's going to know it's him. Uh, but he was so embarrassed. So this is what happened. We were in the restaurant and it was the end of the shift. This was when I was in college, getting my degree to be a teacher. And he asked me, um, for a ride home. He wanted me to take him in his car and drop him at his house. But what he said to me was, Jill, will you ride me home? And uh, I'll let you look that up in English, what it really implies, but it's not what he meant to say. And it was a, when I told him what it meant, the way he said it, um, he was so embarrassed. Jill, will you ride me home? And so he, it, it was, it was not appropriate. We were friends. It was not, it was, yeah. And it was not what he meant to say. He was asking for me to take him in my car to his house. So what he wanted to say, or what he was trying to say was, will you give me a ride home? Which is a very different meaning than will you ride me home? <laughs> okay. So I'm going to just leave that at that. And I'm going to let you guys, um, 
look it up on Google <laughs> and see if you can find out why it's so funny if you don't already know. Um, all right, you guys, um, I'm so excited when we get to share some of these stories about teaching and learning. It's, it's my most favorite thing. So, okay. So let's just do a quick review. We've got the simple past here, past progressive here. Um, simply put, if you've got just a regular verb in English, you're going to add ed, right? This one's a little different because it's the word, the verb study, S T U D Y. So when we have the Y, the Y changes to IE. So the Y changes to IE, just like when we have the um, present tense and we use S, we change the Y to IE. Okay, so she studied in English. That's the past tense, kind of that one time thing, right? So if we have our, our timeline, future here, past here, this is now, and this is like a one time thing. Okay, it just happened once. It doesn't, it didn't happen. It happened once and it's done now. Okay, great. So making this now negative, she didn't study in England. She didn't study. So we changed the main verb back to its um, present tense form and we use didn't or did not. Okay, didn't or did not. She didn't study in England. Okay. All right, um, here we've got a question. Did she study in English? So we're using just the same verb and the same structure of the sentence just to kind of show some continuity and some um, make it easier to kind of see what's changing in each sentence. So did she study in England? Did she study in England? So you're taking that present tense form of the do auxiliary, but that's in the past, okay? Did she study in English? You can also say here, didn't she study in England? The, the point of the question or the meaning of the question in the positive or the negative is the same. It just has a little bit different tone. So if I say, didn't she study in England? That's a little bit more like, I'm confused. If I say, did she study in England? That's just kind of a general question, okay? Now the final one here is where did she study in English, England? So she, we're asking here um, some more specific information. This is that WH -H form. Um, so yeah, so you're asking where did she study, okay? All right, let's continue going here. So we've got our, our simple past here. That final piece, um, where did she study in English, is just kind of clarifying more information, more specific information, all right? So let's take these sentences and kind of move it into the past tense, okay? So we've got our past, or excuse me, our past progressive. So remember past progressive is future past. It's something that started in the past and continued for a period of time and ended in the past, so started, and ended in the past, all right? So, um, and oftentimes, and we'll talk about this here in a second, but oftentimes we use these two tenses together. So you could say, um, she was studying in England when something happened here. When she broke her leg, okay? Hopefully that doesn't happen, but you understand. So she was studying, and so so you. It's very common to um, combine these two tenses in one sentence. Okay, and and the way we do that is with when or while or then, um, just something to kind of combine those two sentences and say during when it started, something happened, and then it ended. Okay, so she was studying in English when she broke her leg or while she was studying in English, comma, she broke her leg. You understand? Okay, so let's put this in the past tense. She was studying in England. The, the negative is she wasn't studying in England. She wasn't studying in England. The question, the yes, no question was, was she studying in English? Was she studying in English? Again, like this one with did, we can say, wasn't she studying in England? It's more of a clarifying question. So maybe you thought 
she was studying in English, but you're not sure. So you're asking, wasn't she studying in England? Um, and then when was she studying in England? Is that, um, you know, the question, the WH question that requires or elicits or you're asking for more information. So when was she studying in England? The answer, of course, for when is going to be a time frame. You can say two years ago, last month, 10 years ago, in March, you know, any of those things that kind of reference in the past. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. So let's take a look. I'm going to move over to the table here. I want to kind of just go over these grammar notes with you guys. Um, this advanced grammar book and class really gets, allows us the opportunity to kind of go deeper into some of these topics. Okay. So let's do that here together. So Let's just take a look at this. We've done this, but, you know, one of the things, of course, that we discuss as far as, you know, what is the most effective way to learn something, and absolutely it is repetition. So here's what we have discussed. We use the simple past to describe an action that was completed at a specific time in the past, meaning it is done. Example, she, Marie moved to Paris in 1891. The Curies won the Nobel P the Nobel Prize in 1903. She researched uranium, meaning it's done, right? She completed her research. So that's a one-time thing in the past tense, right? Okay, number two, we use the past tense to describe an action that was in progress. So it started at a specific time in the past. And the action began before a specific time and may or may not continue after the specific time. So meaning it, here's a thing and they, okay, so this is, it kind of happened for a period of time, a duration. The past progressive focuses on a duration of an action, not it being done, okay? It might be done, okay? But um, it might, it, it's, it's not the point of what you're talking about. You're not talking about it being done. Okay. So the Curies were living in Paris in 1985. That's a good example. M Marie was studying at the Sorbonne. And then during, here's a nice example of when we use during. During 1897, she was researching uranium. So for a year, at least in this example, she began and continued researching uranium so it happened for a duration of time okay and then we talked about this in our last unit about non-action verbs when we were talking in the present progressive so the non-action verbs if you remember um are the words that are like think want hope kind of feelings emotions or states of being or um Let's see, what are what is that other list? That there's a whole, there's like six categories, right? So those non x so we don't typically say, um, here's an example. So to have is to possess something, so ownership. Um, Marie had a degree in physics, and we would not say Marie was having a degree in physics, okay? Um, no, like, um, any of those verbs seem, appear, um, we really don't use those in the present progressive tense, okay? Let's continue. So we use the um, use the past progressive with the simple past to talk about an action that was interrupted by another action. So in this example, we're saying um, they were driving, they started driving here and they stopped driving here and something happened in the middle, okay? They were driving to work when they saw the accident, okay? We use this, this formation we use a lot, okay? Um, so, we, while, so we can use while and we can use when, okay? While he was walking, the car hit him, terrible. When the car hit him, he was walking. Those are both reasonable ways to discuss that okay so you can kind of switch around the the 
the phrases to make the sentence however you like. Um, while he was walking, the car hit him. You could say he was walking when the car hit him. When the car hit him, he was walking. All of those are totally okay. And the meaning is the same, okay? Um, okay, you can use the past progressive with with, uh, excuse me, with while or when to talk about two actions in progress at the same time, okay? So while Clark was leaving the newsroom, Lois was calling the police. Two things were happening in the past at the same time, okay? Was leaving and was calling. While Clark was leaving the newsroom, Lois was calling the police. When Clark was leaving the newsroom, Lois was calling the police. Those are the same meaning, okay? While and when are pretty much the same meaning in this case, okay? Um, okay, great. There's a couple more distinctions here that I'd like to make. Um, and then I will give you guys some activities to work on on your own. A little bit shorter of a class today, but we're covering so much content that I don't want to have these classes last for 45, 50 minutes or an hour because I think you're just going to stop watching. So I'd rather give you little bursts of, you know, lessons and then have you practice on your own. Okay. So that you're building that that habit of learning and um, taking a concept and applying it, okay? Um, and as you become more comfortable with learning in this fashion, you know, um, online and, and on your own, um, you know, then maybe, you know, then you can start coming to the classes live and or joining some of our discussion groups, okay? Okay, number five, it says, be careful, sentences with two clauses. So that's like this, where when she came home, she was reading, this is a clause, and this is a clause or a phrase. It's kind of a partial sentence. It's not a complete sentence. It requires another part. Sentences with two clauses in the simple past have a very different meaning from sentences with one clause in the simple past and one clause in the past progressive, okay? So let's take a look at what does that mean? So in this example, you've got, Simple past came home and a past progressive was reading versus two past simple past examples here came home and read past tense of read is read spelled the same way. Okay. So here is the example for this first one. When he came home, she was reading the newspaper first. She started reading the newspaper and he came home in the middle. So she started reading here. He came home. She stopped reading here. So that's one meaning. So this is a different, a whole different sentence, okay? When he came home, she read the paper. This means when, even though it's, it, the order is totally different, right? When he came home, she read the paper, which means first he came home, then she read the paper, okay? When he came home, she read the paper. That's the difference in the meaning with those two statements. So you know, getting really comfortable with these two tenses is important because you want to be able to communicate exactly what you want to communicate. Otherwise, English feels uncomfortable. You know, if you can't communicate exactly what you want to say, that that makes it a difficult situation, right? Um, okay, perfect. Great. So, um, okay, great. So this last number six here, I'm going to just make sure I'm not seeing my screen here. There we are. Okay, so remember, so number six, remember the time clause, the part of the sentence with when or while can come at the beginning or at the end of the sentence. So for example, when they met, he was competing in Paris or he was in compare, he was competing in Paris when they met. So those have the same exact meaning. That doesn't happen very often in English, but in this case it works, okay? And then always use a comma after the time clause when it comes at the beginning. Do not use a time a comma when it comes at the end, okay? I know, there's lots of little nuances or things in English. Okay, here is your activity for the day. I would like for you to do this exercise here on your own. Um, let me see if I can get it so you can see the whole thing. Is that it, Lily? Guess what, okay. I have this lovely camera. It has a couple limitations. There we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, so you're gonna use simple past or past progressive. It's going to give you the example for both. So was seeing or saw, 
did, were, do, doing. You've got all of the answers in front of you. You just have to decide which one is correct, okay? So you're talking, these are conversations between Lily and Tony, and then another conversation here and another conversation here. So go ahead and pause this and write these down, please. And you can just call it, you know, A1, A2, A3, and then B1, B2, for example, C, you know, you get, you get the idea. Um, okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Please stop this video right now and finish this up. And then we will look at this again in our class on Thursday. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day. I'm going to stop sharing this and then say my goodbyes. Have a great day, guys. Bye.